Will the real creator of Batman please stand up? You gotta be kidding. No, 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 I'm serious. Will the real creator of Batman please stand up? Well, I think when I was 18, I tripped across a character called Batman. It's called Batman by Robert Kane. Oh, really, Bob? Be honest with yourself for a second. Did you really come up with all of Batman on your own? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Hello to all of my beautiful Bat fans. Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the secret history of Batman the Dark Knight. So I want you to all ask yourselves, who created Batman? I'm sure most of you who are watching right now are probably thinking to yourselves, well, Bob Kane created Batman. And for those of you that are really hardcore fans and know a lot about Batman, you probably will know that the real man behind the bat was actually a man named Bill Finger. Some of you are probably watching this and you're thinking, wait, Bill Finger? Who, who's this Bill Finger guy? Every time I open up a comic book for the last so many years, all I've seen in the comic book is Batman by Bob Kane. Bob, Batman by Bob Kane. Bob Kane was the man behind Batman, right? Wrong. Now I want you to all please stick with me for the entirety of the video because at the end I will be making a huge, huge announcement. So you definitely do not want to miss that. I actually find it incredible that so few fans of Batman today know that Bob Kane wasn't the only guy that came up with an idea for this Batman. Batman in fact was co-created by a man named Bill Finger and if anything, Bill Finger is the man who came up with everything that you know and love about Batman. Bill Finger was the dominant creative force of Batman, Robin, the Joker, Catwoman, the Riddler, the Penguin, the Scarecrow, Commissioner Gordon, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, and Gotham City. It was really unfortunate for me to find out so many years ago that my favorite superhero of all time was built upon disloyalty, deception, and trickery. This, my friends, is the secret history of the Dark Knight. The year is 1938. Superman debuted in Action Comics number one and became an instant hit. Well, the success of Superman grabbed the attention of a young man named Robert Kahn, who we all know today as Bob Kane. Bob Kane was working as a cartoonist. Eventually, Bob Kane met with some publishers at National Allied Publications, which we know today as DC Comics, and DC was offering Bob Kane a raise, but they wanted him to come up with a character that was going to replicate the success of Superman. Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were making $800 a week, which back then was a lot of money. They were making $800 a week for their issues of action comics. This got Bob Kane very, very interested. Now this is where things get a little weird. Bob Kane would tell you that he went home and he thought of his world of fantasy and he thought of Leonardo da Vinci and the flying machine that he made and, and he thought of the shadow and, and all of his these characters in his world of fantasy and he just came up with the Batman like that. But what really happened is Bob Kane took a look at his drawing, which looks like this. We see a Batman with these stiff wings he has blonde hair, he has a mask very similar to Robin's, and a red suit. He looked at it, and he thought to himself, this is definitely not good enough. Not long before, Bob Kane had made a friend at a party named Bill Finger. In fact, Bob Kane and Bill Finger went to the same high school, they just never knew each other. Well, they became friends, and what happened was Bob Kane took this original conception for the Batman and brought it to Bill Finger and said, hey, what do you think? Is there something more we can do to make this better? I could just imagine Bill Finger back then looking at this drawing and thinking, what, what is this? What happened was Bill Finger took this drawing and tore it down to the point where it didn't even look like what Bob Kane had originally drawn. Bill Finger is the one that made Batman go from this to this. So Bob Kane takes this idea, brings it to DC on Monday, 
And lo and behold, DC wants to buy it. So Bob Kane goes back to Bill Finger and says, hey, good news, DC wants to buy the Batman. How about you write all the stories for me and you know, I'll bring it to DC and I'll just, I'll just pay you for the work that you do. Now I know what you're all thinking. Why would Bill Finger just say, yeah, dude, take the idea, sell it and you know, just pay me for whatever work I do. Using ghost writers and ghost artists back in the golden age of comics was very, very common. In fact, a lot of stories that you would see from the golden age, there wouldn't even be people credited uh, for the work in these stories because back then it actually was a little bit of an embarrassment to be working in the comic book industry. I was a ghost, I really was. People that worked in the comic book industry were seen as the lowest of the low. That is why you see uh, a lot of people from the golden age that were Italian American, Jewish, you know, come from these working class immigrant families who otherwise had difficulty finding work. Early comic book studios were more akin to something of like a sweatshop. They actually called them comic book sweatshops. And it was, there were these giant rooms full of people with these drawing boards and they were full of smoke. And there was just people working like basically on the line. They were just comic book factories. Everybody was just working to get a product done. They didn't really care who was writing what, who was drawing what, as long as something came together, that's how it was. Now at this time, Bill Finger was not working directly for DC. He was working for Bob Kane. So Bill Finger never really actually was in one of these studios from what I understand. He actually was just doing the work, giving it to Bob Kane. Bob Kane would take it to DC and boom, we have another issue of Batman. But the only one who was ever getting credit for Batman was Bob Kane. Now about a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago, we did a video on this channel that talked a little bit about Bob Kane. However, looking back in retrospect, I think I may have been a little too easy on Bob Kane because Bob Kane, in my opinion, was probably one of the biggest charlatans in the comic book industry. I know that sounds a little bit harsh, but the more you learn about this guy, the more you realize that his success and fame in the comic book industry was really a farce. He was just a smooth talker and was really good at making money from other people's hard work. Many people today actually question how much work Bob Kane actually did do on Batman. Virtually everybody who worked for Bob Kane at some point had a falling out with Bob Kane because Bob Kane wanted to take all this credit, but people that were working for him were like, no, dude, you, you didn't do all that work like we did. Perfect example of this besides Bill Finger is Jerry Robinson, a man who is known for essentially creating the Joker. Uh, there was a, there was big butting heads between Jerry and Bob at one time over who created the Joker, but everybody in the comic book world, fans, creators are more apt to give that credit to Jerry Robinson. After Bill Finger's Comic-Con appearance, a man named Jerry Bales, who today is known as the father of comic book fandom, published an article in a comic book fanzine called A Finger in Every Plot and pretty much exposed Bill Finger as the tr essentially the true creator of Batman. Well, Bob Kane didn't like that. He basically had a hissy fit and published a rebuttal saying, how dare you, I am the true creator of Batman. Nobody else had anything to do with Batman. All these other people were just working for me. I came up with everything. Me, 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 I, 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 Bob, Bob, Bob. And sorry if I'm being a little melodramatic here, but everybody who has ever met Bob Kane or has seen him speak at public events have said that all you hear when the guy talks is I, 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 me, me, me. If the fans didn't know the extent of Bill Finger's involvement with the Batman by this time, the people who actually worked in the comic book industry were not fooled. Every single comic book creator who had ever worked with Bill Finger or knew Bill Finger would tell you that Bob Kane pretty much had nothing to do with Batman. Everything we knew about Batman was Bill Finger. Carmen Infantino. Jerry Robinson, Jim Stranko, and Jim Stranko is a huge, huge advocate of Bill Finger 
and Bill Finger getting credit for Batman. You know Bill Finger? Yeah. Bill was, as far as I'm concerned, the guy who put Batman on the map. He's a brilliant, brilliant writer. He invented the, the big props, for example. And I got to know Bill. I'd see him up at the DC offices, and whenever I'd see him, I'd always take him out to dinner because I'm not sure exactly what it was or if it's any of your business anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill was always liked. And I felt the least I could do was you know, buy him a good dinner when I was out there. And it was great because he, he remembered everything. He was a guy who recalled detail and he could tell stories. He was a great entertainer, really. You know, he was like, I was taking a history of comics lesson from Bill. I know Bob trying to take credit for everything. Everything you would think is good, that's Bill. So Bob Kane goes throughout all the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way up until the time of his death, becoming famous and filthy rich off of Batman. And Bill Finger was not even getting a penny of royalties or any credit for his work that he essentially did for Bob Kane. Just imagine, you create a character and you get nothing for it. And then you see somebody else reaping all the benefits, all the rewards for your hard work. I'm sorry, Bob Kane essentially is everything Batman is not. By the 1970s, Bill Finger had fallen on some really hard times. He was still working as a writer, but it was becoming increasingly more difficult for a writer from the golden age of comics to stay relevant as a writer. All this, all this new blood was coming in. We had Denny O'Neill, we had Neil Adams, we had all these new rising stars in the comic book industry that were outshining all of the veterans in the industry. So Bill Finger, by the time of his death in 1974, and yes, he was taken way too early, he was, he was essentially penniless and he was living alone in the small apartment. Bill Finger died alone in 1974 and pretty much no one even knew. After Bill Finger's death, one can assume that Bob Kane may have felt a little bad for how he acted in the 1960s because as time went on, Bob Kane would actually give Bill Finger a little bit more credit for Batman than he had originally intended to give him. But credit for Batman was always still given to just Bob Kane. And people from Bill Finger's family actually tried to get Bill Finger credit on Batman and they were all denied. So many years later, after the death of Bob Kane, which was in 1998, a writer named Mark Tyler Nobleman decided to do a little bit of research about Bill Finger. He was a comic book fan and he had heard the name Bill Finger before, but uh, he wanted to learn more about him. So he did some research. He wanted to write a book about him. And this just turned into essentially a crusade for Bill Finger. I really would encourage you all to go out and watch the documentary called Batman and Bill. I've watched it many times. It is an amazing documentary and it's very touching. Basically what comes out of this documentary is Mark ended up finding Bill Finger's granddaughter and her name is Athena Finger. And he got her to jump on board in getting Bill Finger some recognition. I don't wanna to get too much into the legalities of everything because I feel like I would just butcher that. But ultimately, Bill Finger was finally given credit for his involvement in Batman. In fact, the first comic book issue that you will see Bill Finger getting credit for Batman was Batman and Robin Eternal number three. If you open up that comic book, if you have that issue, you can open it up and it will not just say Batman created by Bob Kane, but it will say Batman created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger. And I guarantee you, if you have any recent Batman pub publications at home right now, if you open them up, it will say Batman created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger. And it gives me great joy to see that this man is finally getting credit for his involvement. Yes, it came all too late, 
but I'm glad that it came nevertheless. And that brings me finally to the huge announcement that I was talking about at the beginning of the video, and that is I have gotten in contact with Athena Finger, who is the granddaughter of Bill Finger, and she has agreed to come and talk to us about Bill Finger on our Friday Night Geek Show. So you do not, do not want to miss this opportunity to engage a little bit with Athena on our live stream, which will be taking place this Friday, August 7th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Mark your calendars because you do not want to miss this opportunity to see Athena talk about her grandfather who created Batman. I'm sorry, he did create Batman. And you don't want to miss the opportunity to maybe ask some questions that you've always had about the Dark Knight. So that about does it for our video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments if you knew a little bit about Bill Finger before or if this is all coming as a surprise to you. And I expect to see you all on Friday at 8 p.m. for our very exclusive conversation with Athena Finger, the granddaughter of Bill Finger, who was a co-creator of Batman. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.